Hi guys, the, the, uh, thank you for coming in the Friday afternoon. Um, that, uh, uh, I'm very, very uh, excited to have this seminar. That uh, It has been very much the sort of the response to various um, uh, sort of the trend. <laughs> So I'm sorry that uh, it was a bit of the technical problem. So that uh, what I was gonna say is that the, uh, the field of study or discipline of Aya, it seemed to be in a crossroad. And as also the case for the area studies as well. And also that the history itself is uh, having a transnational or global turn. And it is uh, almost like the time for us to rethink the structure and the nature of the compartmentalized uh, disciplines or field of studies. Uh, and it's been going on probably for some time now. And in terms of the framework, reframing that the sort of these uh, new field of study or disciplines or cross disciplines, I have been working with that the various uh, field of the people and it seemed to be that quite interesting thing was coming up uh, from the area called relational sociology. And this is uh, something which seemed to sort of uh, cross border the various uh, sort of disciplines or field of studies, which we call AYA or area studies or history and probably also international law. And it was quite uh, fortunate to have uh, Professor uh, Sakai who has been actually working on a similar sort of agenda of creating the new field of study because of just to try to respond to various uh, sort of shortcomings of the compartmentalized uh, various disciplines and the field of studies. So it's very, very uh, fortunate for us to uh, have her who has also published recently the uh, book, that the seven volume book on this very uh, subject. So welcome to Professor Sakai and thank you very much for this uh, occasion. And also as a commentator, it's also quite fortunate to have Professor George uh, Lawson, that the, he also has been uh, sort of a proposing that the different way of thinking about the uh, uh, discipline and uh, knowledge from the relational uh, sociological point of view. And he has been sort of publishing uh, various works uh, related to this one and also accommodation of the global history to the IR. So it's very, very fortunate to have uh, Professor George Lawson as a commentator as well. So uh, we will just now give to the, the Professor Sakai for the 40 minutes talk. And then we will have uh, George for the 10 minutes uh, commentating. And then we will open up for that the uh, questions uh, uh, that after Professor Sakai's response to George's comment. So thanks so much. And uh, uh, please go ahead, Professor Sakai. Thank you very much for introducing me to this uh, wonderful workshop, uh, Dr. Uh, Akami. Well, uh, uh, it's my it, it's great pleasure to be here to join the uh, uh, workshop, the, the Why Do We Need Relational Study on the Understanding Global Crisis, uh, or held by the School of Culture and History and Language at uh, uh, Australian National University. Um, talking about the uh, uh, Australian National University, actually they're talking about my visit to Australia, well, I've been there for twice only, and the last time when visited Australia, it was uh, uh, the uh, to IPSA uh, annual uh, uh, biannual conference uh, held by uh, 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 the, uh, 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 the your university, Australian National University, uh, held in the Brisbane. And uh, uh, well, I remember very well that it was two years ago, and uh, uh, it was uh, really the beginning of my study on this relational study in the, uh, on the global crisis. So I, I gave very, very short presentation about this idea. And uh, 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 well, <laughs> well uh, unfortunately, it was matured and uh, 
uh, it is not well structured. So uh, I, I, I fail to, uh, fail to, to, to uh, I can say, uh, uh, received a lot of comments or questions from the floor. So I hope, I really hope that uh, after two years, <laughs> well, I hope that uh, there, there, there should be some uh, progress in my study on this uh, relation studies. Uh, well, uh, I prepared the, uh, pr uh, the paper for my presentation, so I will read uh, my paper and uh, I will share the PowerPoint uh, to, 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 to uh, let you understand a little bit better. Uh, yes. Okay, let's see. And, oh. Well, slideshow. Uh, can you see? Is it okay? Right. Um. Uh. 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 uh let me uh, start. Since 2016, I've been conducting the research project called uh, "In Order to Overcome the Contemporary Global Crisis: Establishing the New Paradigm of the Social and the Human si Sciences Based on the Relational Studies," the so-called Relational Studies on the Global Crisis. The project is support, supported and sponsored by the grant in aid for scientific research on innovative area from the Ministry of Education in Japan from July 9, uh, 2016 to academic year 2020-21. The more than 30 uh, scholars from various fields of studies from human sciences and the social sciences have joined our project as a core members. Among them, young promising scholars in the field of IR, area studies, and comparative, comparative politics have joined the five subgroup in the project covering Middle East, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Europe. Actually, myself, I, I myself is a scholar on the Middle Eastern studies, and uh, actually I spent a, a number of years studying on the uh, contemporary Iraqi politics. So uh, 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 this, this, uh, well, this uh, project include a number of various kinds of the scholars from the various fields, but still uh, that we have uh, majority of this project, a majority of the member of this project are the scholar on the Middle East. So maybe my, my viewpoint is uh, <laughs> well, rather based on the study on the Middle East. After conducting, um, Ah, sorry. After conducting the various kind of the field researches and opinion polls in the research areas and holding an international conference in the Singapore, Serbia, and Thailand, as well as in, uh, in Japan, almost every year, we are now approaching the end of the project period. And this year, we have begun publication of seven volume of the relational study on the global crisis series from Iwanami Publishing House in Japanese. And now I believe it's time to deliver the idea of the relational studies uh, on the global crisis in English. So thank you very much to, uh, thank, uh, thank, uh, I, I, I'm very, very grateful for uh, Dr. Professor Akami to, to, to offer the, the, such kind of the opportunity to give the presentation in English. Um, First, let me explain briefly what is the relational studies on the global crisis is. What do we mean by global crisis? And what is the purpose of the, relation, the introducing relational studies? In the manifest of the above mentioned series, I wrote, the global society in the 21st century has been challenged by wars, civil wars, lies of the uh, 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 lies of the violent militant and the spread of the protest movement all over the world. The consequence, uh, consequent, consequent increase of the, in refugees and migrants has caused the lies of the racism, discrimination, xenophobia, and intolerance. In short, we are facing the global crisis. COVID-19 is no exception. Thus, the global crisis here include September 11, the emergence of the Al-Qaeda, the US invasion of Iraq, Arab Springs, ISIS, and the massive exodus of the Syrian, Afghan, Libyan, Yemeni refugees due to the civil war there. The most of them seems to have occurred unexpectedly and surprisingly. In the manifest, I continue as follows. 
The contemporary global classes differs from the conventional international classes in the following aspect. The broad horizontal synchronicity of the mutual influence. The interaction and the interdependence among the actors and the agencies on various scales and across time. Sudden emergence of the social fault line and the emergence of the complex multiphasic actors and agencies. The conventional academism failed to solve or properly analyze this new crisis as it was established on, the, uh, on Western oriented principles based on the actor centric paradigm, especially focusing on the state actors. In this Western focused, uh, focused paradigm, non state actors in the non Western part of the globe are out of the scope. What happened and is happening in the global south is invisible and unknown to those who stick to this actor centric perspective and who focus only on the event in which the actor is clear and obvious. In contrast, the relation studies on global crisis place no, the more emphasis on the relationship. It focuses on the relation based paradigm that is to see how the actor is involved in the intertwined network of a relationship at various levels instead of actor based paradigm. It considers that the actor is a result or product of the intertwining, the crisscrossing of the relationship at various levels. The purpose of the relational studies on the global crisis is to introduce a perspective through which we can grasp the whole world and make what was invisible in the actor based paradigm visible in the relational based paradigm. The last sentence of the manifest, manifest summarizes the aim of this project, to make what was invisible in the actor-based paradigm visible in the relational-based paradigm. Why then did this idea come to my mind? Why did I consider that the contemporary global crisis in the 20th century, 21st century are invisible in, ex in the existing academic framework? My experience as a scholar of the area study on the Middle East, especially on Iraq, as well as a scholar in IR, brought me to this idea. Neither IR nor area studies could prevent or solve unnecessary wars, insurgency, and increase of the radical militant movement. Here I feel uncomfortable and frustrated by the fact that we could not foresee this event happening. In other words, why do we fail to see any sign hinting that the global crisis are about to occur? The reason why I proposed relational study on the global crisis is for the purpose of overcoming this weakness of the existing IR and area studies that cannot or does not see what should have been observed and examined in order to understand the global crisis. First, I'd like to point out the weak point of the IR, which failed to see uh, uh, what is happening in the local community in the non-Western part of the world, because it either doesn't want to, or is not accustomed to seeing what is going on there. As we all know, existing IR was established and developed in the Western academism, shedding light mainly on the interstate relations among the Western countries. IR thus the, uh, uh, the considers event worth studying if they matter in the West. In the field of IR and the other political science, the Middle East, for example, has, has become no more than the place of origin of terrorism and therefore the object of the military attack and the democratization from the global north. If we look at article on the Middle East published uh, uh, published in the esteemed international relation, relations journals, such as the Journal of International Relations and International Studies Quarterly, and etc., we found we find that most of them, most of the article, are concerned with wars, security, terrorism, violence, weapons of mass destruction. 
issues originating from the Middle East are considered as objects of the international politics and not as, a, uh, as cases to be considered, considered theoretically by IR scholars. Timothy Mitchell goes further saying, the quote, the consequence of this relation between the discipline and the world religion is that the object of the study remains defined and grasped only in terms of its relationship to the West, unquote. The criticism of IR for being a Western and European-centered academic paradigm have been laced for years from, the, from within IR circles, including Amitav Acharya, Ole Weaver, and Stephen Smith. However, I'm not suggesting that what is needed here is simply to shift the pivot of the study from the West to other region of the world, as Chinese scholar of the IR proposes. This may widen the area that IR can cover to Asia, but still only shed light on the state, state actors in the newly developed non-Western countries in Asia, generally neglecting non-state actors in the global south. The second reason why IR cannot fully capture the early symptom of the new, new global crisis is that the IR sees the conflicts which are related to the non-state actors in the way that the scholars of the area studies discover them, name them, translate them into the Western context, then upgrade them as actors equivalent to the state. While IR focus on the state actors in the actor-centric paradigm based on the Western nation-state nation system, area studies shed light on the local network and the movement at the non-state level in the non-Western part of the world. The area studies have been formed within the part of the Western academicism that strongly inherits the tradition of the Orientalism. Consequently, it has often been ex ex expected to serve policy making and the strategic studies in the global north to influence, tame, and control the global south. David Kilkulen, a scholar from, who served as the advisor to the David Petraeus, the commanding general of the multinational forces in Iraq under the Bush administration, points out that, a quote, since the new threats are not state-based, the basis for the, our approach should not be international, international relations, but anthropology, unquote. In other words, area studies expected to play a crucial role in winning heart and mind in the wars and occupations. Take the example of the notion of tribes and the sect in the Middle East. They were, in most cases, introduced into the local community by outside, the, outside observers, especially from the West. I'm not saying that these are the strange notion to, uh, uh, unfamiliar notion to the traditional society in the Middle East. Indeed, the sectarian or tribal factors have functioned as important social cleavages there. However, once they are discovered by the Western scholars, their social and uh, political role in the local community are translated, uh, uh, translated and interpreted in the context of the Western-oriented IR and are institutionalized as alternative for state actors. This simplified framework for the understanding often produced a new fault line. During and after the Iraq war, U.S. introduced a simplified understanding of the Iraqi society as being composed of three ethnic sectarian com communities of Kurds, Sunni Arabs, Shia Arabs. The idea of the three divisions of the Iraqi society was reflected in the formation of the post-war Iraqi regime, which brought widespread corruption through the uh, sectarian allocation system of the governmental post. The newly introduced electoral system encouraged sect-based mobilization and accelerated the fight over the vote based on the person's ethnicity or sect. Thus, the problem exists in the process of transference of the knowledge from the area studies to IR and in pattern of the translation. The US anthropologist Julie Petit expressed the following reservation. If 
sect and the tribe are reinvigorated for understanding and acting towards the Middle East, the onus is on the academy to provide a vigorous critique and devise new framework of understanding as to how their deployment may be making them a reality on the ground. The third aspect of the invis invisibility of the contemporary classes in the eyes of the IR can be ascribed to the presence of the imagined relationship that developed within the actor. That is, relationship imagine, imagined from the, uh, from the historical memories, perceptions, and the accumulation of the negative emotions such as trauma, hatred, betrayed ex uh, and betrayed expectations. IR deal with actual face-to-face -face relations among the actors. However, that does not, does not mean that face-to-face -face relation can always be autonomous or alien from the imagined relationship, but are often subject to influence from perception towards others, which can be greatly affected by emotion. When the Bush administration kept insisting, the, uh, in, uh, insisting that the U.S. has contributed to re-establishing the new democratic Iraq through its military intervention, despite the increase in the anti-U.S. insurgency and the worsening uh, security situation in Iraq since 2003, um, scholars of the Middle East area studies in the United States lamented that as follows. The Bush is seeing Iraq as if it were on the other planet, not, on, not the Iraq on the earth we are living on now. My string, strong belief is that we should not consider that kind of the decision making based on the false perceptions as an exceptional case which might be neglected or omitted from the analysis of the mainstream IR. The study of the emotion in IR or social science in general can be only found by analyzing failed cases for the purpose of explaining why the misunderstanding that caused the failure occurred. Although the study of the emotion has been recently really appreciated and is encouraged to be taken seriously, it is widely admitted that it lacks the proper methodology for analyzing the various emotions that appear from the uh, interconnection within the relationship. Here, the so-called social theory may be applicable to the relational study on the global crisis. The social theory proposed by Toshihiko Amemiya and other social psych psychologists at Kansai University in Japan considers that actual relation with the others and imagine the relationship developed inside the human minds are reflected in individual perception. In this perception, three patterns of the self-perception exist together. The self that sees others, the self that others see, and the self that sees himself or herself. herself. In other words, the social theory argued the presence of the multiple relationship within the within a single self, a minimum unit of the actor. If we apply this theory to relational study on the global crisis, we can, we can find invisible imagined relationship formed in the social memory, power relation in the past, prejudice rooted in the history, and the view of the others. That we cannot neglect the influence of the invisible relations that might affect face-to-face -face relations. This is what I call embedded relationship. Invisible embedded relations will often stand in contradiction to actual real world relation, and they can affect the occurrence and progress of the conflict, resulting in the unpredictability of the contemporary global crisis. In the last part of my presentation, I will discuss three types of the embedded relationship in the case of the EU-US-Iraqi relations, which have been constructed through the accumulation of both sides' perceptions of, other, of the other. The first embedded relationship. 
the imaginary network in the spatial and the historical memory can be embedded in both parties in the relationship, which is something that has made the bilateral relation between the US and Iraq complicated. The US military invasion surely invoked the memory of the British military invasion of the Ottoman territory and its control of, over Iraq during the, uh, uh, the war, uh, First World War. At the same time, the speech of then President Bush mentioning the Crusaders no doubt reminded the Muslim not only the history of the repeated dispatch of the European Crusaders to Jerusalem, but also the, the sore fact of the Israeli occupation and the, and the current Israeli occupation of the East Jerusalem. Similarly, simple local resistance against the uh, US occupation for, uh, occupying force was interpreted as being the part of the long history of resistance by Muslim or Arab people from the time of the Crusaders to the days of the colonialism. This perception prevailed in the other part of the Muslim and the, uh, the Arab society, resulting in the birth of ISIS and other anti-US radical militancy. The second type of embedded relationship is the paternalized categorization framework set by others for the purpose of an instant solution to the social strife. To understand the conflict or to simplify the library, uh, uh, political and the social elite rely on the imagined relationship constructed based on their perception of the, of, on, of the other, supported by limited knowledge of the specificities of the other's society, culture, and history. In this context, face-to-face -face relations are often eclipsed by the symbol they create, which represent a more palpable sense of reality. We can find that this type of the embedded relationship in the US policy on sectarian and ethnic conflict in Iraq. Although area study, studies scholars, especially anthropologists, are sensitive, sensitive when applying the primordial perspective for understanding the social structure of the non-Western societies, this can easily be introduced by government in the name of the national security. Thus, it was after the invasion of Iraq when the power sharing system based on the sectarian and ethnic division was introduced by the foreign occupier uh, that was dependent on the application of the paternalized sectarian and ethnic categorization framework. Considering the civil war in Iraq during the 2006 and 2007 as sectarian war, the US Army relied on the other primordial factor that is tribal authority to solve the situation. As many area studies scholars who argue the return of the primordial perception of sub or supranational identity dismissed the flexibility and the interchangeability of the communal identities and created noble, noble state actor like non-state actors by naming them tribes or sect and so on, the idea of sectarianism became rooted in Iraq after the US in intervention. It resulted in the development of the new sources of the conflict, such as the current rivalry between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The third embedded relationship is the established, the esta is established based on the self-image created by the others. That is based on the interna internalized perception by others. This can be clearly seen in the behavior of the former expatriate of the Iraq, who used to be under the protection and influence of the United Kingdom and the United States during the 90s, after the Gulf War. They absorbed the, uh, the ideas and the viewpoint of the West, and then used this idea and the viewpoint in their Right in, in, in writing their ruling policy when they returned to Iraq after the regime change in 2003. Among these ex expatriates were Shiite Islamist political parties such as the Dawa Party and the Islamic, Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq who had been in exile 
in Iran since 80s. They have been forced to adapt to the Western liberalism and the democracy after coming, coming into the contact with the United States after the Gulf War. The notion of dividing Iraq into three, according to the three ethno-sectarian unit, was one idea they introduced in the 90s after they shifted their center of activities to London. It is true that Joe Biden, uh, uh, the future president from next year, uh, uh, this US Senator at the time, seriously proposed that this, this idea after the US witnessed the escalation of the post-war civil war. But the idea itself it was originally proposed by the Iraqi opposition, opposition in exile in London in the 90s. Here, the Orientalist viewpoint in the West were embedded and internalized by the Iraqi political elite in exile, then imported and foster, for, fostered in Iraq after 2003. As the post-war political reconstruction proceeded, allocation according to the ethno-sectarian divide became looted and considered de facto mechanism. It was obvious that the Western Orientalist mosaic model internalized in the idea of the power allocation was far removed from the reality inside Iraq. Most of the population criticized the allocation system as a major source of the conflict inside Iraq. This gap caused the power struggle among the Shiite Islamists, that is between the former expatriate ruling parties such as Dawa or Iski, and the subtle tendency who were in indigenous local Islamists who were not exposed to the US influence until 2003. A subtle tendency reflects the view of the local Iraqi people who felt betrayed, neglected, and isolated by the United States by in, in the 90s. In this way, we can understand that the rivalry between the Dawa and the subtle tendency over the past 15 years or more have been caused by the different embedded relationship with the, with, with the United States. The former, the Dawa party, behave according to their internalized Western viewpoint, which the latter, the subtle, subtle tendency, lacks. The conclusion. How can the notion of the embedded relationship com contribute both to bridging IR and area studies and to furthering the development of the, uh, these two fields? In IR, it will allow us to better position the argument regarding the transnational and subnational networks and solidarity, which used to be discussed as a matter of identity and culture, but is now all too often reduced to cultural reductionism. Notion of the embedded relationship offers the perspective to understand better the influence, influence of the internalized embedded relationship to face-to-face -face actual relationship among the actors. In area studies, there have been heated debate on how to understand the sectarian identity. If we consider that if we consider the sectarian identity as something in which an embedded relationship is awakened uh, or reactivated, it will be possible to examine the process of the activ activization and the politicization of the social identity without being en entangled by the debate of, on primordialism. In addition, Transnational sociopolitical movement based on the supranational identity, such as pan-Arabism -Arab, pan and Islamism, could be understood as an imaginary network in the spatial and historical memory without considering them to have the persistency of the pre-modern traditional identities. Thus, by introducing the notion of the embedded relationship, we can transfer the debate on area specificity of the Middle East to the broader field of relational studies. Once we remember the fact that the region called Middle East is a product of the intersection of the complex relationship among the Western actors, as well as the West and the non-West relationship during the colonial period, the task of the area studies uh, will be to study 
what the international relation or international politics pr uh, has, have produced. The area studies and the IRs are the two, co two sides of the same coin of the relational studies, and thus the relational studies on the global crisis will hopefully end the simplified dualism of these two fields of academism. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. Uh, although I think it, there was a quite a bit of the Middle Eastern aspect, there is a quite strong uh, sort of overall theoretical, uh, methodological uh, aspects uh, for that, the various uh, areas. So that the George, could I invite you for the comment? I'd be delighted. Thank you, Tomoko. Um, Thank you very much also to Professor Sakai. Thanks to everyone for coming on, at least in Canberra, what's a beautiful Friday afternoon. I'm very impressed by the commitment to, to the cause here. Perhaps we are developing a new paradigm here in Canberra on Friday afternoon in early December, 2020. It'd be nice to get something out of the year that's uh, positive. Um, I guess the question, the bigger question that animates a couple of the more specific ones I want to ask uh, Keiko and then others is clearly, this relational move and this global relational move is onto something and the question is what because you can find it in lots of different places so one is the uh, version oriented around embedded relationships that we've just been listening to there's another set of uh, this and how it works in global history for example which is fundamentally relational in its understanding of connections and flows and mobilities of various kinds. It's also there in IR, uh, particularly around that move towards global IR that you've mentioned in passing, Keiko. And you can find it in sociology, you can find it in philosophy, you can find it in aspects of political theory, uh, you can find it in various indigenous uh, traditions and the way that people are mobilizing those for a relational move of one kind or another, where we think about uh, Waka Papa or Ubuntu or uh, Pachamama and various other traditions. So, my question that I really want to ask you and ask everyone is are these complementary or are they operating in different ways and trying to do different things could we integrate them or are they different enterprises and if we were trying to integrate them what would that look like that's my big sort of background um, question that I that I have that I was puzzling through as I was listening to you and I have two very specific small questions and two slightly bigger ones that that link to that uh, point First small one is, you set the bar for social science very high. Um, you want us to predict stuff. And I'm always wary when I'm asked to predict stuff because um, I'm very bad at predictions, particularly about the future. And so are social scientists more generally. Um, so is that the goal? And if so, how might uh, embedded relations and your relational uh, uh, studies more generally help us with that? The second small one is, I think you can mobilize more from IR than you do in that I take your point about state centrism and then I take your point about an actor generated set of approaches, but there's a lot of approaches, including some fairly mainstream ones that don't necessarily rely on those assumptions. I mean, forms of liberalism don't, forms of constructivism don't, forms of English school theorizing don't, and there are a whole range of radical traditions that certainly don't, whether they're linked to Marxian ideas of dependency or world systems or post-colonial uh, moves of various kinds. So I do think there's perhaps more give and take between your enterprise and work in international relations than you lay out and not just global IR. In fact, I want to ask you in a, in a minute or two whether global IR actually isn't very relational and possibly isn't helpful for the type of enterprise that you're concerned with. So those are my two very small comments. My two bigger uh, questions is one about the global and one about relational. The one about the global is about macro processes, um, a scale up from some of those that you discuss. So you're particularly interested in social psychology and you're particularly interested in embedded relationships that work via individuals and groups of individuals, which strikes me as extremely interesting and important. But when I see the term global and I see it used to think through various crises, I think about the really major global challenges that maybe frame or possibly reframe some of those that you're interested in, particularly those in the Middle East. Think about climate change or think about the, the Christ, various crises of global capitalism, including that we've been in possibly since 2008 and 
even if we thought we overcame it, it's sort of coming back in a COVID and post-COVID era. Crisis of global governance of various kinds, you know, compare the reaction to the 2008 financial crisis to COVID. In one, global governance was animated and moved, in the other one, it's been largely absent. There's been this concern about nationalist reactions of various kinds. Uh, and then there's the really, really big changes, the kind of shifting tectonics of world politics itself, usually understood in the West, and here I'm including Australia and possibly Japan, uh, as, as the crisis of the rules-based order, the crisis of the liberal world-based order. It's also sometimes known as just the move to a post-Western uh, world. And whatever we call it, I wonder how much the, uh, the kind of background condition to the crisis that you talk about. Because on the one hand, they may generate fires, a crisis of various kinds that no one can put out because there's no one there to put them out. Or you may have too many actors trying to put them out. And that may be your story of Iraq, or that may be certainly be the story of somewhere like Syria. In a much more decentered global environment, you have these regional crises and they can simmer or stalemate for a very long time because you mobilize different parts of international order effectively against each other. So you get a standoff in Iraq where you get the Iranians on the one hand, the Saudis on the other, both with their broader proxies further afield. In Syria, the same kind of story, Iran and Russia on the one hand, various Western coalition forces uh, on the other. So does a more decentered operating environment stand as the background operating set of context for the crisis, uh, various forms of crises which you talk about? So my first question here is, is there a bit more global in your global crisis than we might think? And to what extent does that help to frame or reframe or uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, starting points for the project, thinking through that notion of global crisis? Second question is about relationality and is trying to make something of that opening question I had about to what extent these various moves towards relationality are working together or in slightly different directions. I'm intrigued that the project hasn't got that many explicit links, at least in, in the presentation towards global history and global sociology and my little subfield of that global historical sociology, both of which are explicitly relational in terms of how they set themselves up and also set themselves up against western centric state centric analysis just as you do and here i want to trouble to one aspect of this uh, move which is the one towards global ir it strikes me that lots of the work in global ir including acharya and then acharya and bazan is actually not very relational i mean what it's doing effectively is taking units whether they're nations China qualifies there, or regions, Middle East, or civilizations, which they tend to use quite often, and the West would be the, the category there, and see them as internally bounded units that are effectively set with a whole load of properties that then bump into other units of various kind, cultures and regions and civilizations, and so on. And these internal dynamics are kind of essential cultural properties, often primordial. So you take the Chinese school of IR, at least the Qin Ya Qing version of it, that's exactly his argument. China has effectively been this single unit for several thousand years. It has a certain difference, which he calls relationality, which, but I don't think it is very relational. Uh, it has a certain sort of cooperative, harmonious way of being, collectivist way of being, that's necessarily distinct from other parts of the world. And he usually uses the West as his example, but he also does mention the Middle East and, uh, and various other regions as well. So actually, there's a kind of primordialism and culturalism and even an essentialism built into these units, which strike me as, as working against uh, the type of project um, that you wanted to develop. So I wondered about whether there's a bit of friction there in some of the, 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 the overt, sort of explicit projects oriented around relationality and whether you saw that the same way as me or whether we could tease that out or whether you think there is some, some common ground there that we could uh, bring uh, together. It's not just you know, the Middle East that needs to be rescued from a primordialism. You know, the West itself is a, a fairly recent invention uh, imbued with a certain set of cultural characteristics that uh, occludes the entangled sort of incorporative nature of how it was developed and when and how 
it was developed and for what purposes. So I think that kind of critique that you, that you laid along the Middle East is something that we could do for any of these units. And, and a relational approach, I think, needs to do that, it needs to not take for granted these particular boundaries, uh, whether they're about the Middle East or China or East Asia or uh, the West itself. Um, so what might, if I want to push you on both the global and the relational, what might we do? And to give you one example, I thought I could talk just for 30 seconds or so about, take, say, the Arab uprisings of, of 2011, if we want to stick in the Middle East. What would a sort of global relational move that I'm advocating um, do? Well, it could do a couple of different things. One, it could take that whole wave, that transnational wave of uprisings, effectively as a single case rather than break them down into various different cases to be compared. It would think about uh, issues, think about that as a single entity of some kind, and then think about issues around timing, state society relations, various international dynamics, and so on. Or it might more specifically and more concretely look relationally at various transboundary uh, relations of some kind or another, those between activists, those between state elites, those between the type of uh, insurgents that uh, you've discussed. It might look at symbols and ideas as they crossed borders and how they were uh, inflected and changed as they went. It might look at the role of social media and other forms of media and so on. Um, so I think that's a slightly different way of thinking about embedded relationships from my part of this more general orientation ethos and move towards uh, something global and something relational that I wanted to ask you about. It seems to me that the symptoms that we're identifying from various different branches of this relational turn are the same. They're against essentialism, they're against primordialism, they're against cultural reductionism, they're against these various forms of, of internally bounded, taken for granted, sort of property-laden units in the world. But the remedy, I think, is maybe a bit different. Um, the remedy in my case would be around maybe a couple of uh, concepts like not just entanglements and connections and flows that global historians like, but structural entanglements, the kind of entanglements plus power asymmetries that help to give us a particular set of incorporative logics that help us see how these units of analysis, whether they're the West or the Middle East, uh, have been uh, uh, produced and reproduced and contested over time. I mean, if the West was such a straightforward category, then why are we talking about the Western crisis right now? Why are we talking about a contestation over what it means to be Western? And we could say that over various other entities as well. So I think there are different type of conceptual moves. There's a slightly different way of thinking about the global and the relational. And my big question uh, for Keiko and for others is, is this part of the same project? Is this part of the same type of move? Are we generating a new paradigm? Or to what extent are we are doing slight sort of variations on a theme or possibly even at some points uh, uh, contesting each other's projects? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so that it's got the lots and lots of big question that uh, sort of a, we would like to sort of have a series of workshop or something like that. But uh, uh, Sakai says, that, do you want to have a quick response to these major uh, issues <laughs> in uh, the short time? And maybe some of the questions that uh, from the floor could actually pick them up uh, following on. Yeah, uh, well, actually, thank you very much, George, for your comments. And, uh, well, uh, well, actually, I I expected the, the, the comment will be such big and the, uh, the, can I say, <laughs> by the coverage. That's why I ask you to give me the the comment prior to the conference. But, uh, well, actually, in this, it was only in this morning that I received a very, very brief uh, summary of your comment. But I, I, I didn't expect that there was such big topic. Um, so uh, I don't think that I can reply all of your uh, comments and actually this is a kind of the homework for me. I mean, well, uh, the, all, the, all, all the comments you made is to, to, uh, to, to uh, is a topic that we need to uh, tackle with uh, from now on. Thank you very much for your comment and thank you very much for, for guiding us uh, to the, uh, 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 the, the, the new, new step. Um, but uh, let me uh, respond to one or two things. Um, as for well, the, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, the easy, easy uh, uh, question, uh, uh, easy to uh, answer is, is uh, um, well, about global IR or a Chinese core of the IR. Well, this is definitely different from uh, my, my idea. 
I mean, well, th this is one of the reasons that why I, I say this is a group, uh, inter relational study on the global crisis, not global IR or not global studies or any, anything that is some, something in uh, the global studies. So, uh, uh, so uh, this is a kind of the alternative. My, my idea is kind of the alternative to such kind of the, uh, the, uh, the new challenges of the, uh, uh, the Acharya or a Chinese school of IR uh, against the Western oriented the IR. So I, I wanted to say that well, this is not the way that to, 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 uh, 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 to propose the alternative to the existing Western oriented IR. But uh, we, we, the, the, what, what should be criticized is the state, uh, the centrist, centricity of the state actor of the idea of the IR. Not, but, but so, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Chinese school of the IR never uh, overcome this uh, problem. That they, 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 they are very, very, I can say, they consider the relation change uh, Chin's argument considered that the relation is, uh, 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 relationship is important based on the Chinese traditional idea. So that means that was the, 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 the Chinese school of IR considered that the Chinese has some specific, uh, 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 I can say, uh, specificity and uh, they depend on that, uh, that kind of the, I can say, uh, uh, the core of the uh, idea. So I'm sorry. Well, uh, I'm I, I'm sorry for my my my, my poor English. So uh, well, I may I may have considered again and uh, I reply to you uh, uh, more precisely. But uh, what I wanted to say that uh, uh, this the, this kind of the group the, the global IR is completely different different. But as for the as a uh, 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 I'm gonna say a, a field of the study like. Uh, um, Mm, you mentioned that yes, and global history and the sociology or uh, other uh, and especially the global historical sociology. Well, that shares the uh, uh, the, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, most of the part of my argument. Actually, I learned a lot from the global group, uh, the idea of the global historical sociology. But unfortunately, the problem is that unfortunately, in Japan. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the number of the scholars on the global historical sociology is not very big. And there's not big debate among them about, uh, uh, about uh, the how they, how can I say, uh, uh, introduce a relational study on, on, on the field. Um, I, I think the traditional soci sociology in Japan is basically a, a, a focus on the domestic phenomena. Japanese domestic phenomena, uh, uh, and uh, they, uh, 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 I, I, I don't think that uh, there's a number of uh, scholarly articles on the, uh, uh, how can I say, a, a global historical sociology. On the contrary, global history, as for the global history, there is a more and more scholars uh, 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 tackling with this global history. And especially, well, you mentioned that the Middle East, I'm sticking on the Middle Eastern studies, but uh, actually one of the leading professor on the global history in Japan is from the, uh, 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 from, uh, is from the Middle Eastern studies. And he is doing the global history on the uh, uh, medieval uh, Islam, uh, Islamic world. And uh, actually he is uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, can I say? Uh, well, I I follow his idea. I mean, uh, well, as I mentioned, the Middle East is not uh, a primordial area or region, but uh, it was produ produced through the uh, uh, the global relations, and this is the same in uh, it, uh, Southeast Asia. So there are several. Uh, prominent professor, Japanese professors on the global history. So uh, what I miss in my, in, in the series of the publication of the Iwanami uh, 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 books, um, uh, I failed to uh, ask the scholar on the global history to contribute to the chapter. This is, uh, this is my regret. 
So in the future, for sure that I, I, I direct to collaborate with uh, uh, the scholars on the global history and the so, especially uh, the global so historical sociology. Thank you very much. And the other things, um, uh, you mentioned the climate change or uh, crisis of the global capitalism or uh, 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 well, these kind of the major uh, uh, really, the global crisis are not mentioned in my presentation. Yes, it is true that the, because it, 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 because I uh, well, I haven't studied uh, the climate change a lot, and uh, I, I understand the importance of the the, uh, the climate change or uh, uh, the crisis of the global capitalism. Blah 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 blah. But uh, this is simply that why I I I I am lazy not to study on that issues. But uh, instead, I ask some scholars to contribute to some chapters on that issue. But unfortunately, well, actually, you know that in Japan also, the academism has uh, uh, various divisions, and it is quite difficult to, to organize the joint, joint conference or joint workshop with the scholars uh, from the, uh, for example, uh, 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 Department of Agriculture or Department of the, uh, uh, the uh, Ecology or something. And uh, I, 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 well, this is, this is also my regret that I couldn't do that. But also, uh, uh, I hope that we can we can expand our uh, uh, study on this field also. And uh, um, uh, especially, uh, there's a lot of um, anthropologists uh, who is doing the very very good work on the not climate change itself, but the kind of the I can say uh, 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 the uh, ecological studies. So well, this is the future task for us. Thank you, Messi. I don't think that I can, I, I, I could answer to your very, very big question, but about this, uh, I will, I will uh, 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 receive as a comment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I, I hope this is the beginning of the big dialogue in any case, and that the George, the big question, and maybe George, you may have to do the, uh, the tour, the lecture tour in Japan on the, the global historical sociology. Um, anyway, so that the, because that the question time is limited and some of you may have to go sometime. So if you could leave your question, if the time runs out, I now see that the one question and that, uh, that the, in the chat, we could actually uh, sort of record it and we could address to these uh, questions if the time runs out. So please uh, do so, that the, either to me privately or uh, to the uh, rest of the class uh, in the chat. And we will get back to you on that uh, questions uh, somehow. So I'm just going to open the uh, uh, question to the floor that uh, how do I, uh, okay, so if you want to go ahead, uh, that's fine as well, but uh, if you want to sort of raise the hand or whatever, uh, that, that please go ahead and uh, if you could make the question quite precise and that the Sakai sensei if you also answer become uh, quite precise that, uh, that, that sort of that that would be really good. I may take a couple of questions uh, to start with uh, if it's okay. Uh, anyone who want to go ahead please go ahead or they can raise the hand. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, James, do you want to go ahead? Thank you. Thank you, Tomoko. Uh, just a brief observation. I, as I understand it, relational studies seeks to expand the, the number of actors. And to that extent, it shares with Global IR the idea that you need to get beyond certain kind of constricted approaches. I mean, I agree with George's observations about Global IR. It seems to me the thing that's missing, though, in the account I've heard and I've, I've followed Professor Sarko's presentation with very great interest, is the, the idea of power. It strikes me, I'm not a follower of Foucault, but the idea of embedded, embedded notions seems to conform so closely to this idea of power-knowledge relationship that we're familiar with. Um, 
you could see it operate in the Middle East, but let's step right now, but let's step back and think about it historically. I mean, those Indonesians who read Clifford Geertz on the difference between Santri and Abangan, and then started writing about Indonesian society in terms of Santri and Abangan, a concept they didn't necessarily use before they read Clifford Geertz is, is a famous example, but an even better one go to the end of the first war, the Greek-Turkish exchange of populations between 1922 and 1924. Both the states decided they were going to exchange populations. They defined their populations in terms of religion. So the Orthodox had to come to Greece, the Muslims had to go to Turkey. Often the Muslims were Greek speaking and had lived in Greece for a long period of time. A lot of the a lot of the Orthodox were Turkish speaking and had lived in Turkey a long period of time, didn't matter. They were defined in terms of religion. In time, both Ataturk and Venizelos in, in Greece found it convenient to use these concepts. And when these communities turned up in their new countries, they also used these concepts because they found them politically useful. And in fact, there were political coalitions in these countries based in part on these transplanted populations. In other words, what began as a concept that was applied essentially from outside as a result of the negotiations at Lausanne uh, and um, partly invented by uh, Trijof Nansen and, and other people associated with the League of Nations, these became facts on the ground, as they, as they like to say in the Middle East, and then conditioned the action. So what I want to hear uh, addressed in this in this debate, and it's a very interesting debate, I'm sure it's got a long way to run, is how we factor into the story the, the issue of concepts, often concepts imported from outside becoming part of the situation as a result of power relationships, and then changing the nature of the, the activities that those actors that you want to include uh, engage in when they're engaged with the international system. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, should we uh, collect uh, two more questions? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, is there anyone who would like to ask question? No. Anyone? Okay. Um. So, uh, do, if that's the case, that the, would you like to answer that the Sakai Sensei? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kot uh, can I call you Dr. Cotton? Uh, James? <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, thank you very much for your observation. I think that this is observation, and uh, it's not uh, I can say the clear cut uh, the, the question. But uh, well, I I completely agree with you that the idea of the power is very important. And uh, uh, actually, uh, in my presentation, I it, 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 I didn't mention the the uh, the, uh, the factor of the power uh, explaining the uh, embedded relationship. Um, well, actually, um. When I say the embedded, the, the importance it, or importance of the uh, idea of embedded relationship, um, well, of course, it is important to see that what is embedded uh, as a embedded relationship, but also it is more important to to see how the embedded relations are activated and uh, 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 I can say uh, reactivated again. Um, so, as you mentioned, um, uh, if the power relation changes, the, the, the process of the reactivation of the embedded rela relation will change. So, uh, uh, in the case of the Iraq, as you, uh, 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 the, the same as the case of um, the Greek-Turkey uh, exchange of the population, um, 
well, uh, 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 it was a kind. It, it was thought that uh, uh, it should be easy uh, solution to 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 uh, to solve the uh, the sectarian or tribal conflict in post-war Iraq. But uh, and uh, 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 well, uh, say uh, the problem is that the such kind of the uh, the division or uh, 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 sectarian allocation of the uh, governmental post was done under the certain po uh, certain uh, relation of the power. I mean, some, a certain uh, uh, situation of the power. Uh, the, 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 the power has dominated by uh, by the, the ruling party, like uh, 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 as I as I mentioned, the expatriate the Iraqi Shiite Islamist Party, which is uh, 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 which consider that the, uh, uh, the Shiite population should be the power base for for them. Then uh, uh, that, uh, under such kind of the situation, the structure was established. Um, allocation system, allocation uh, the system was uh, was uh, uh, established. So. Uh, Yes, um, uh, it is not uh, enough to say that there is an embedded relationship, but uh, it is more important to see how the power relation is uh, uh, influenced in, in the process of reactivating the uh, embedded relations. Okay. That, uh... The, is there anyone else? Could the, the person that uh, uh, love help? Is that uh, you? That the, you had a few comments over here. Would you like to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, my question to Professor Sakai would be, uh, <clears throat> what, according to you, is the uh, significance of uh, cultural and social psychology in uh, determining uh, the outcomes of area relations and uh, how does social and cultural psychology uh, affect the affects the current uh, way in which we study area relations like is it, like you gave an example of how sociology could uh, give us a give us different understanding of current uh, issues related to global crisis and global conflict. Uh, similarly, how according to you would social and cultural psychology help us in uh, studying uh, global crisis and global conflict in a different manner? Because you went down to the level of the individual relations and how when we ignore them, we ignore certain important aspects of why certain things are happening in certain areas and why uh, countries which can influence the relations with, between smaller countries uh, or supposedly less significant countries in world affairs, uh, how we ignore certain individual level relations and their importance in determining what's happening. How, what do we do about it? Uh, would you be able to answer? Uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, very short um well actually the, the one uh, 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 the reason why i mentioned the social theory which is uh, uh, developed by the uh, uh, the sociolog sociological uh, psycho psychologist uh, is that uh, uh, in order to in order to can say apply such kind of the idea to the international relation i'm, I'm not saying that well uh, the psychological psych, psych Psychological uh, way of uh, analysis can be uh, can be useful in understanding the global crisis. No, that uh, as for the methodology, as for the methodology, the idea of the uh, uh, their, their social social theory can be applicable to the IR. Uh, well, of course, the, the well uh, the. In, I understand the importance of the psychology itself, but uh, I don't. I don't know whether uh, it can be uh, directly applied to the uh, the uh, uh, relationship between the, uh, the, uh, the the communities. Did I answer uh, your question? Uh, but uh, when we are talking about uh, individual level relations, and when we are talking about 
embedded uh, power systems uh, or idea of embedded notions what are we exactly talking about i mean aren't we talking about how people think or how people uh, make choices on what basis do they make choices so and ultimately i think that is related to how people think and uh, when uh, when we ignore cultural uh, issues or when we ignore uh, cultural relations among people in a particular area when we talk about relationships i mean uh, don't they ultimately boil down to how uh, people think about things and how people think about each other how people think about issues affecting them rather than how say united states thinks about certain issues in a particular country so uh, that way is i mean ha have you come across any scholarship which has a uh, studied the impact of psychology on area relations or uh, like is there any current academic scholarship on that uh well uh it's quite difficult to answer of course i un i understand well uh, i mean well uh 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 uh, uh not the psychology, psychology, but the, uh, the the sociology itself deal with uh, the culture or uh, 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 I'm gonna say history or uh, uh, the, uh, the, well any kind of the social social uh, uh, can say a factor in the in the community and it is important to understand the, the what they feel but uh, uh yeah and also that it well as i mentioned in the presentation even in the ir nowadays they they consider that the emotions are a very important factor to understand the political uh decision making or political uh process um but it doesn't mean that the, uh, uh, the psychology as a as a uh, 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 as uh, as uh, uh, can I say a field of research, field of study, is it can be applicable to the IR or can be can uh, can uh, should be uh, 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 focused on in the uh, analysis in the IR. I mean. Well, I, I think that methodology is completely different from the uh, psychology and uh, uh, political science. Mm -hmm. well, we cannot, uh, uh, of course, the, we can uh, we can uh, use their idea, and we can we we can learn from their idea of the, psych uh, the uh, psychology. But uh, it doesn't mean that we can apply the psychology itself as a methodology to analyze. The situation in the IR, uh, the internet, uh, the global crisis. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, quite difficult because it is a pretty sort of diverse area that, that you are dealing with. That, that are there more questions? If there is no question, that, that I just wonder whether um, the uh, Professor Sakai could uh, sort of. Uh, uh, sort of summarize that uh, in the sense that the, what George was talking about, where do you think it is heading to? So that the, the reason that the, we wanted to have this seminar is that there is a shortfalls of the, the various study fields or disciplines, uh, which were in a way very much compartmentalized and in a way you are proposing something, a kind of framework which seem to in a way connect to some of the field and uh, as uh, George was talking about that the sort of are there very parallel things going on because the relational studies as he was saying that there were quite uh, similar sort of things happening in history, IR, international law, international relations and what are uh, area studies. So how do you see what you are proposing is integrating or heading. Uh, basically, you are proposing a new field of studies. Uh, so maybe if you could sort of make the summary of that sort of, um, you know, where we were going to uh, head on together kind of summary, then that may be quite uh, good to conclude uh, the session, I wonder. 
Um, thank you very much. I didn't expect that we, I, I should conclude this, <laughs> this seminar with such kind of the big, <laughs> big topic. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, anyway, I have to think about this, uh, 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 this because uh, as I mentioned, this, this, this is the end year of the project. And uh, uh, after the five years project, I have to write the kind of the uh, 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 con uh, uh, concluding report to the Ministry of Education and uh, which uh, 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 where that I, I should mention the where we are going and the way, uh, to, to, uh, to what extent we, 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 we uh, step forward and from, from now on where that we are heading for. Um, well, uh, actually what, I'm, what I by myself want to do is to, to, to uh, not to, not to, propose the new one i mean new 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 field of the study i mean well parallel to the ir or parallel to the global history or parallel to the sociology or uh, other things well rather well what i i wanted to say is that the well, in each field of the study there is a can you say a, 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 a paradigm based on the relational uh, 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 a relation oriented uh, perspective and actor based uh, perspective. So each, um, in each field of the study, what there is. And in IR, of course, the traditional and the conventional IR has, uh, is established as uh, a, a state centric uh, paradigm. But uh, as uh, George mentioned, there's a radical IR or, um, uh, well, I really agree with uh, the, uh, uh, the school of um, post-modernist -modern, post theory of the IR. Um, so there are several groups that we, which, in, uh, which put the importance in the relational, relational studies in IR and also sociology and the history and uh, even in the area studies as I mentioned well uh, the scholar of the area studies some of them stick to the uh, the I can say uh, pre primordial actors uh, uh, in a certain area but the others uh, will uh, put more importance on the relation or network of the uh, uh, society uh, rather than the, uh, uh, the substance of the actor itself so uh, what I wanted to uh, wanted to do is to uh, combine these uh, the part of the, the, the each field of studies and call them as relational studies. So I don't think that we can develop one certain methodology to uh, to to analyze the relational study relation, relational studies. No, um, well I I I think that the what they can, the, 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 all the scholar can adapt the, uh, uh, their own methodology according to their own study, uh, 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 the field of studies. But they have to think, they have to shift their pivot from the state-oriented state or uh, actor-oriented uh, uh, perspective to the relation, relation-oriented, uh, uh, relationship-oriented uh, perspective. This is what I wanted to do, and uh, actually, well, this is my dream. That uh, um, well, uh, 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 among the other, among the scholars, well, I like, I really uh, like the idea of uh, actor network theory uh, of Bruno Latour. And uh, Latour is criticized that what his idea is very interesting and quite quite interesting, but still, well, the, it is impossible to adapt his theory to to ana to the I can say uh, actual analysis on the ground. For example, the, his theory cannot be ad uh, cannot be applicable to the situation in the Middle East. But uh, what I really dream of is how to apply his idea to understand the actual uh, uh, the global crisis like in the Middle East or in Indonesia or in China or uh, I can say uh, uh, the uh, actual uh, 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 the events in the whole world. This is my dream. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. And uh, that the, it's been pretty uh, grieving that the sort of in English and uh, thank you so much uh, to share the uh, sort of your ideas. Is there anyone else that, that to ask any question anymore? No? So that the, if you uh, interested in that sort of ongoing kind of dialogue of the uh, this kind of idea that the, we may hopefully do a few more uh, workshop in the uh, future that the sort of gathering the people that the, who may be interested in that sort of relational aspects of the, the uh, analyzing the area studies or that the IR or even that, that, as I uh, mentioned, that the sort of uh, not only history, but also that the international law as well. So uh, if, yeah, okay, so that the, just to leave the nod if there is any comments about for the, the ongoing dialogue as well. But maybe I might, if there's no more question, I might just conclude that uh, this session. And thank you so much, Professor Keiko. Uh, Sakai, and also thank you so much for your uh, attendance and uh, participation.